Welcome back to Missy Journals. Today I actually have a requested video. I'm going to try my very hardest to make this as quick as possible. <laughs> you know me with quick. I'm going to try not to blab as much. So my requested video is um, I did an Instagram challenge recently, which I will link my Instagram down below where you were doing doodle challenges and I try to upload some of my doodles on a regular basis. My doodles are also where I get my inspiration to do um, my monthly layouts for my um, bullet journals and I also do a lot of my own doodling and cut them out and use them in place of like ephemera but it's my own homemade things because a lot of times I will watercolor my doodles and I don't like to watercolor in my bullet journal most of my journals because the pages aren't thick enough to handle the watercolor so I watercolor them in a mixed media pad like this and then I fussy cut them out and they in turn turn into my own homemade ephemera so I had some questions on how I do it, how I doodle, and where I get my inspiration from. So I'm going to try to make this video as quick as possible. I just want to put it out there, like, right away. Right away. Let me get a sip of coffee, though. Mm. My coffee's good this morning. I am not a professional by any means. I am also limited to just fun, cute images. <laughs> I do not draw people very well at all, and um, it's my own style. Everything's fluffy and cute and big. That's my style. That's what I do. So this is my brand new art journal. Um, so there's only a few things in here. Um, this was one of the um, that I posted to Instagram and had a lot of questions about. This one, you guys, you may remember, this is where I did the, um, um, I showed you how Tombow brush pens work. Um, just a quick flip through. There's only a few things in here, you know, just in case you're not on my Instagram. This is why I got some of the questions. He was one of everybody's favorites. I love him too. <laughs> and I do, I use different mediums. You know, this is like Tombow brush pens. This was colored pencils. I also do watercolor my tree back here. Um, this was all watercolor. So just depending on what I'm doing, this was the Instagram challenge. You'll probably notice um, uh, they're numbered because that was for each day. And um, those were those were some of my doodles. So again, I'm trying to make this quick and it's not going that way. I think I talk way too much. So anyways, we're going to turn the page. And um, I'm just going to do some quick doodles. I'm going to show you kind of how... I do it and I guess the best information that I can put out there when it comes to doodling especially how I do it is I do everything in pencil first I have a huge eraser I always have like four of these things on hand they're all throughout my house and then when I'm satisfied with what I'm doing I always trace out my doodles in a micron because microns no matter what um, medium you're going to use whether it be Tombow brush pens watercolor um, or color pencils it doesn't pick up the color and bleed this does, doesn't bleed at all and then this makes your doodle permanent so my biggest recommendation is sketch them out first with pencil and for me it's always um, blocky like I always kind of put the, like, I'm going to draw a B, something, I, I try to think of something as easy as possible I can think of. So, and for me guys, I know I have to kind of tilt my pad just a little bit because that's where my hand is at, but um, I always try to like sketch out like the basic shape and my hand is very, very light. I'm going to try to do a big B. My hand is very, 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 very light because I don't, you know, because you're going to do a lot of, um... You're going to do a lot of imaging imagery. I don't even know if that's the right word. Like you're going to make a lot of movements in this. So you want your pen or your pencil. I don't recommend using pen. Now if you're talented enough to use a pen and like you can just get it down in one shot. God bless you. <laughs> that's not who I am. So bees kind of like have like four segments to them. So like if this is your head segment, this is where your big eyes would kind of be. And guys, like this is what they would call like a rough draft. Okay, and then like his little like th thorax, like kind of where his wings would be, would kind of be more like blocky and kind of more U-shaped up over here to his eyes. 
see how we're kind of making um we're kind of putting pencil marks inside of our basic shape and then from there uh he kind of has like this is kind of where his wings would be this is kind of where his wings would be and then from here see we have our basic shape and this is kind of where i would bring in like eh. see i don't like that at all this is why this is why it's perfect <laughs> to use your eraser okay so i just come in like this make sure i stay within my markings here and then this is kind of where i would draw my one line here and then this is kind of where his wings would be and the bee's top wing is kind of flat so i kind of do them together so they're basically the same shape then i'll bring in the little bit of a shape like this you see this one needs to be more round and then they have like kind of a shorter wing that overlaps that one and i'll bring that in like that kind of like that and now see the only thing is I don't like the head on this and I think he needs another like little segment here so you just kind of erase that but kind of stick with where you are we're kind of bringing him in now and then he kind of has like another rounded segment like from his body so we'll bring that around like that and then his head is kind of off of that like this and then he always has big eyes like that and then his antenna would kind of come out like that and this part you would erase because this was just our basic perimeter here and that's kind of where we're going with the bee and he kind of would have like a little black of like a little stripe here okay and then this is where you would kind of like finalize his shapes this is kind of where I make my pencil marks just a little bit more darker to indicate yeah this is where we're gonna go with the bee and then um, of course you know his wings have all those cool little designs but I wouldn't put that in now I would definitely take my um, micron and then I would outline him and then once I have him completely outlined out then I would put in um, the wing like the wing has like you know like little designs in it so that's like my basic B see how it's just very basic and then um, my shapes are very basic and then I kind of bring home what the B looks like I hope this makes sense I've never in my life ever taught anybody how to doodle because I really feel like I'm not a great doodler <laughs> I try I try very hard I also had comments, Missy, how do you make your pumpkins? Oh my gosh, guys, pumpkins are really, really easy. They are an oval. And then you bring this oval kind of lower and up. And bring this oval kind of lower and up. And then like a straight on one, you would kind of take the stem up like that. And then you could put a little curly cue off of that, you know, like that. Like that's like that's me. I'm very big. My stuff doesn't quite look realistic. But also you can do pumpkins with the same kind of theory. You can kind of have like a rough shape. So let's say, you know, and I don't make my circles perfect all the time either because very few things in life, that's one thing I do notice in my own personal um, observation, very few things in life are perfectly shaped unless they're like handmade but especially in nature things are not perfectly shaped so you would kind of do the same thing you're going to make like that perfect kind of oval kind of here in the middle and then you're going to take off of that like so and then let's say we have another one that kind of connects up in here and then you're going to kind of do the same thing. You're going to kind of make, you know, how pumpkins have like those little ridges down here at the bottom. And we'll give it one more up here too. And then you have this background back here. So you have to decide kind of like in here. And then this is where I would use my pencil very, very lightly. I would kind of decide in here where I wanted my stem to be and how it's to look. And then to get those marks kind of like, you know, your pumpkins kind of 3D. 
you just kind of draw those in like that and then your pumpkin is 3d looking so it kind of will bring this one in a little bit for you guys so when I'm using my micron of course you're not going to make the full circle so the very first thing I'm going to do is make the stem because I'm not going to fill that space in then I'm going to go around with my pumpkin shape down here at the bottom like that and then you're going to bring in the lines just like we have the pumpkin here and then see how our light lines back here that gives the pumpkin like that 3d dimension off the stem so of course this pumpkin is just a little bit more realistic so again it just kind of goes with what you want are you going for like a cartoon kind of look are you trying to make it fun you're trying to make it very realistic and then of course you're going to take your eraser and you'll erase all of your lines and you'll kind of see your pumpkin comes together it looks 3d it looks like a real pumpkin i just have to attach this one little line over here it went a little too light and now your pumpkin looks you know this is kind of your cartoon pumpkin but that pumpkin looks very 3d so it's just kind of things like that you want to start with your basic shapes basic shapes and then your micron is what will bring everything to light that's your permanent and then whenever you're doing side by side so let's say um i want to bring a taller pumpkin into this let's say like a gourd so when before i would um erase all of this so maybe i should just make another one <laughs> just so you guys can kind of see um so we'll do another circle we'll do a little bit of a different shape all right, we'll kind of put this one off to the side a little. So this side will be bigger. Kind of like that. We'll put our off to here. And then we'll kind of just bring this pumpkin like this. Okay. We'll make this just a little bit taller. It's a little too short. Okay. Now let's say I want to put a gourd in, but I want this pumpkin to look like it's on the front and I want to give this a little bit more dimension. So I have to remember to kind of take these up. Okay. Um, I'll start with my gourd over here and of course I'm going to bring it over like this and gourds kind of have just a little one like this and his stem will be kind of down here. Alrighty, so there's my gourd, but I want it to look like my gourd is behind my pumpkin. So when I go in, you have to remember which one you want to bring forward and which one you want to bring back. So I want my gourd to be in front of my pumpkin. So that's the very first thing that I would trace out. And he will get all of his lines together. Like this. And guys, this is just very rough. And then my pumpkin, because I want it to look like it's behind my gourd, I start from where the gourd lines start. I hope that made sense. And then that'll look like you have a 3D picture going on there because um, you drew it out front. You'll see what I mean in a second. I just hope it makes sense. I'm pretty good at explaining things. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, what the heck was I trying to get across? Alrighty. Okay. And then we'll give them like a little curly cue. All right. And then now when I erase this, you can see it'll look like the gourd is sitting in front. Excuse the erasing marks. They shake the table a little bit and you're kind of connected to that. Okay, and then um, you're just going to bring all of this together. So you just bring all of this together so that it comes to its little finality, and then it looks like the gourd is in front. And of course, to give the gourd a little bit of movement here, you kind of just want to, you know, give him a little bit of texture. That's another thing. Lines and dots. Like even in here, like lines and dots, 
bring things to life. Highlighting, that's when you would use a different color pen. Shadowing. But then now it looks like the gourd is sitting in front of top of the pumpkin. So I hope I explained that well. Um, I don't, <laughs> like that's how you doodle. It's just basic shapes. And then whatever you want to bring in front, that's why when you do everything in pencil, you just have to remember where you are going to erase. Because once it's erased, that'll show your depth of different shades, different what you're pulling to the front and what you're pushing to the back. Um, I think, well, I always got another question too, like about my mushrooms. M okay. I'm going to teach you, I'll show you real, real quick how to do like your, your super most simplest mushroom. You take your, your lines always go out a little bit on mushrooms at the bottom. And then to get the part that's like the under cap of your mushroom, you just make a small circle, but start it down below where your lines are and you're not going to let them touch. So that's the under cap of your mushroom. And then the top cap of your mushroom will start a little bit below it. And then you just kind of pop it up here. And I mean, that is the simplest mushroom you can make. And that literally takes two seconds. So here's your under part of your mushroom. It looks, it has dimension. Here's the top part. And of course, you know, then you can draw in your little circles, you know, for your dimensional part of your mushroom. You know, I'd put some little black spots up in here too, you know, make the top part a little red and then bring it down into a different color. And then if you want to do oddly shaped mushrooms, which is one of my favorites, um, I always start with the top of the cap. So let's say I want to make mine kind of like this. Then what I'm going to do is then I'm going to bring it together and cap it. And then I'll bring the bottom portion out and kind of cut it short like that and then the stem will kind of come off to the side and then you're just going to make your lines down here and kind of bring them all to one side and then the same thing you're gonna have your little and then there's a different oddly shaped and listen guys mushrooms come in all different kinds of shapes like you can do all different kinds of like oddly shaped mushrooms like here, like it, they're so easy. They're just so easy. And the stem, the, the bottom part, like if you want to show the whole mushroom, just remember that the stem of your mushroom is always wider than the mushroom always. And you know, you can make the bottom portion of your stem a lot bigger. You know, you can make it a lot wider, a lot more in depth if you want. You can make these odd shaped if you'd like, you know, like we can give this one kind of like a point at the tip here, you know, give it an odd shape. That one looks like it's more leaned back. So then I would definitely pay attention to, you know, the undercut of the mushroom here, which is the part that, you know, is your under part of your mushroom. Just make sure it's all going in the right direction so that your it looks unified. Some people like to make these look like little fairies, little fairy mushrooms. So in that case, I would give this like a little lip at the front. And how you do that is you just bring it over and then cut this. And then how you show that dimension is just to cut it like that. You know, and then you can give this a little bit more of a dip. And then you would just erase that. And there's like a little fairy hut mushroom. Guys, mushrooms are so easy. So I hope, I hope this helps just a little bit. I'm not sure exactly. Oh, I know what other else I got. I got questions about. I know I keep going on and on and on. I'm so just going to make this video very short. Stars. Oh my gosh, stars. Stars are so easy, guys. Do you remember as a kid? Stars. <laughs> That's my stars. And then all I do is I take my micron. Your micron is what brings everything to life. And then I just trace the outside of the star. That's it. And then I don't do anything in the middle. And that's how I get my stars. Sometimes I make them a little wonky because I don't want, all my, again, I don't think anything in life is all unified. So I don't want all my stars to look the same. So sometimes I make them a little bit wonky. But that's how I do my stars. And then, and then it's the same thing. What I do to make like the little diamond shapes 
is I start off like this and then I take my pencil and make them elongated. And then when I go in with my micron, I'll, you know, just do it once. And then you erase that. And then you have your little diamond shape. And then you put your little, you know, like little plus signs or, you know, one of these guys and like one of these guys. And then one of these guys. And then you have all your sparkles. Simple, 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 guys. I hope that helps. I hope that answered some of your questions about like doodling. It's just basic shapes. If you're coming here to look for how to do very realistic doodling, I am not your person. I do not draw very realistically. <laughs> I like cutesy. Um, I really, that's really my aesthetic is like big. Um, I like, like, I like things really wide, kind of fat, if you will. Um, and I did that totally upside down. Very cutesy, like, like very cutesy, wide eyed, bright. Um, that's really my aesthetic. So I hope that that helps and that translates. I hope that that does well. And then my other quick tip that I can give you guys is, for instance, like when I drew this little pumpkin spice cauldron, um, what I did is I pulled up on Pinterest um, pictures of cauldrons, and then I had my phone sitting here, and I just looked at the cauldron, and then that's what, when I was looking at the pictures, that's what translated for me. So if you're ever stumped on wanting to really, like, focus on something and really, really draw something, and you're really struggling with it, find pictures of really what you want to bring to life and kind of set them somewhere where you can see and then just put it on paper. And really and truly, if it looks pretty much close to what you're trying to get, then that's your artistic style. And I think anything, anybody kind of like doodles or draws and they're really happy with it, they're content with it, then that's their artistic take, that's their artistic input on it. And to me, that's art, that's beautiful, that's your style, that's your aesthetic. Don't try to make your art fit somebody else's art, don't try to make your stuff look like somebody else's stuff, because you're going to fail at that, because that's not who you are. Be true to your artistic drawing style, if that's a word or a phrase <laughs> and you'll be much more satisfied with what um, you bring to life because it's you this is how you draw and this is how you kind of see the world and to me that's beautiful that's absolutely beautiful so I know this video was kind of a little different and all over the place but I just wanted to put it out there somebody did ask me how I do what I do so I just really quickly wanted to show you that you know I start everything off with pencil first um, Sorry, my dog's like freaking out in the background here. I'm sorry. He's in the room with me. Um, I kind of start everything out with pencil first. Like just large images. I use my pencil to kind of bring it home. And then I use my micron to bring it to life. So I really hope that answered questions. I hope this helped. And yes, guys, if you doodle and you do lots of kinds of journaling like I do, do this. Paint them, color them, use markers, whatever. Cut them out and use them as your own ephemera. It's amazing. I I just, I have so much satisfaction in that. So this video probably was going to be in my mind 10 minutes and we're probably over 20. So I'm going to go now. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope this video was a little bit helpful. If you have any more questions, things that I didn't think of because I've never in my life done anything like this. I've never shown anybody kind of my process of how I draw. Um... Don't hesitate to leave those comments in the comments. <laughs> that was supposed to be, don't hesitate to leave those questions in the comments. I will do my very best to answer them. I'm not an expert by any means on this, but this is how I get by. So if you're just starting out and you're kind of like me, you're just kind of, you really want to do it, just do it. I guess that's my best advice because I was the same way. I looked at other people's stuff and I'm like, I could never, ever draw that. My stuff would never look that good, but I really wanted to do it. And the more I do it and the more I just make it my own, the more it is so enjoyable. I spend my evenings with my art journal and just doodle and I have so much fun. So that's my encouragement. 
Don't worry about what everybody else's looks like. Just do you. So I'm really going to go this time, guys. Please subscribe if you're new to my channel and this stuff interests you. I do all kinds of journaling videos, hauls, and anything you guys, like, ask me to do. I try to, you know, your wish is my command kind of thing. <laughs> the best I can. So guys, take care of you. I will talk to you very soon. Until the next time, stay creative and journal what you love. Bye guys.